This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. Let's fire in. It is Winning Cures Everything. I am your host, Gary Seegers. Today is Wednesday, February the 20th. On today's show, I got a rant for a little bit about Alabama basketball, how ridiculous this is. Uh, Along with that, we're going to talk about the ticket prices for tonight's Duke-North Carolina game. And I got four four college basketball picks for you for this evening. Again, two and three, second straight night last night. We're getting off the schneid. You can't win if you don't play. Shoot or shoot. I got four picks. We're going to roll with them. Uh, first, the show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books over at tunicatravel.com. That is where you go to get more information on those sports books. So go check it out, tunicatravel.com. Uh, as for us, you can follow me at GaryWCE on Twitter. You can follow the show at Winning Cures or on Facebook, facebook.com slash Winning Cures Everything or at Winning Cures Everything.com. Uh, we've got everything you need over there. Hit subscribe on the YouTube. Hit like on Facebook. Uh, hit subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, whatever your favorite podcast app is. Make sure you share out the show for us. We want as many people in to, uh, to have fun with us as possible. So tell everybody you can about it. And let's go ahead and start with today's first topic. Alabama basketball lost to Texas A&M last night, 65-56. to Now, if you don't watch the show, I don't talk about it a lot, but I am, I was born and raised an Alabama fan. And that is all sports throughout everything. My dad graduated from there. The first four years of my life were spent in Tuscaloosa. Uh, we have gone back, we've had season tickets since 1988 for football games. I go back to at least one basketball game a year, et cetera, et cetera, right? Baseball, softball, you name it, everything, Alabama, whatever. Um, no, obviously, I still try and look at all things objectively, but I got to talk about this. Alabama, under Avery Johnson, since beating Kentucky earlier this year, they are 5-8 and eight in the SEC this year, since then. Uh they, they've got six top 100 recruits on the roster. Two top 50 guys. And this team looks like they have no idea what they're doing. I get so tired of being mediocre. And while we did have Anthony Grant for a while, right? Anthony Grant ended up going 3-27. and in his tenure against ranked teams. He was 117 and 85 overall, but but let's talk about this. Avery Johnson is in his fourth season. He is now 72 and 57 overall. He is 14 and 12 against ranked teams, but that makes him 58 and 45 against unranked AP teams. That is insane. He has got a pretty good recruiting classes every year he brings in great talent and then they cannot figure out what to do with them watching this team play basketball and try to figure out things that the other team is doing is mind-blowing it is so incredibly frustrating to watch because they have no idea how to play together last year they lost six straight games to end the regular season and still made the NCAA tournament because they had Colin Sexton. They went on a run in the SEC tournament, beat a couple of ranked teams, but, I mean, are you kidding me? They are 14-12 and 12 against ranked teams under, under Avery Johnson, but overall 72-57. and 57. I, I cannot deal with this basketball team anymore. I, wa- I try and watch every game. I watched at least some of every game. And last night, I just completely turned it off. Once A&M started going on their run, it did not matter to me if they won or lost. That is a... a, And and I understand that some basketball teams are really, really bad. But the inconsistency... I guess the consistency is that they are inconsistent, right? Because they can blow out Ole Miss, they can beat Kentucky, and yet... They'll go and lose on the road to Texas A&M, or lose at home to Texas A&M. I mean, they five and eight. 
they have beaten the the bottom three teams of the SEC and the two Mississippi schools at home. And that's the only wins they got in the last 13. Vanderbilt has to come to Tuscaloosa this weekend. It would not shock me at all to see Vanderbilt get their first SEC win of the season in Coleman Coliseum. All right, we're going to jump off that one. Let's talk about ticket prices for Duke and North Carolina tonight. Big time top 10 matchup. Barack Obama is supposed to be there. Everybody's talking about it. It is Super Bowl ticket level. It is crazy how much these tickets cost. The average get-in price is over $2,300. This is for a regular season college basketball game. They could end up playing this team. Like, they've got to play them again, what, in a couple of weeks? Next week? Something like that? And then they could end up seeing them again in the ACC tournament. So, you're going to see this team three times. Like, these same two teams. Possibly three times. Over the next three weeks. And people are paying $2,500 for tickets? I mean, somebody paid over 9000 for a seventh row seat. And I'll tell you why this is. Okay, the average get-in price for top 10 Duke, North Carolina games before today was $1,400. That's the average get-in price. Now, one... Cameron Indoor, those prices are always going to be more expensive because there's only 9,300 seats in the entire place. The building is tiny. It looks like a history building on campus. It is small. It is it's, it's as small as you can get for an on-campus arena, at least for a big-time program. It's built mostly underground, so the building itself on the outside looks tiny. But honestly, once you're inside, you're just everybody's on top of each other. It looks like an old high school gym. The other part of this is Zion Williamson. This kid is an absolute bona fide superstar already. Now, I am one of those that doubts how his game is going to translate, but I would imagine with as athletic as he is, he is going to find out how to translate to the NBA. He'll learn how to shoot better, all that, but athletically, he is off the charts. That is why the tickets are so expensive. It is Zion Williamson. It's the Zion show. That is what everybody wants to see. And they will continue to pay these extraordinary prices. TV ratings will continue to go up because they are trending better for Duke games this season than they have in any game in any season. The TV ratings for tonight's game are going to be through the roof for no other reason than Zion Williamson. Duke, North Carolina always gets good ratings. But Zion Williamson is the draw. And look, he's a lot of fun to watch. He is a whole lot of fun to watch. All right, let's move into the college basketball picks. Uh, we went 2-3 and three last night. That moves us to 146, 123, and 5 on the season. We're still over 54%. I have dropped like 1.5 percentage points in the last two weeks. Or last week, I guess. Uh, it hadn't been a good week, but we get off the slide tonight. Uh, let's go on and jump in. Syracuse, minus one and a half tonight uh, against Louisville at home. Louisville does not shoot the ball well at all against uh, zone teams. Syracuse plays about the best zone there is in college basketball. Uh, Syracuse at home, they got the weekend off. They've had a week to rest since their uh, subpar performance against NC State. Uh, so I like Syracuse at home here, minus the one and a half. I'm going over 136 and a half for Illinois State and Indiana State. If you look at these two teams and what they have done against each other, in the last five games, not one of them has gone under 137 points. Uh, both of these teams put up a lot of points. They play at a very fast pace, 136 and a half. It's come down from 139, and I like it a lot more at 136 and a half going over than I did at 139. Uh, but yeah, 136 and a half, Illinois State, Indiana State, lock that in. Next up, Marquette minus seven. Uh, at home against Butler. Butler does not play well with Marquette. They do not match up well with them. Marquette beat them by, I think, 13 or 14 earlier in the season already. Marquette is at home. Uh, they are looking to win the Big East with Villanova's loss to St. John's. They are in the prime spot. They've got a game coming up against Villanova. This is not a look-ahead spot. This is you have to continue to win if you want to win the Big East. 
So they need this win, and I think they're going to get it by more than the seven points. Next up, my last one, Stanford plus eight at Arizona State. Stanford already beat Arizona State at home once this year. Uh, Stanford has been playing really, really well. I think they've won four of their last five games uh, straight up and against the spread. They are, I mean, they're covering like crazy. Stanford looks like they finally turned a corner. Arizona State, super inconsistent. I'm going to take them plus the eight tonight. Stanford plus eight at Arizona State. As always, you can go to winningcureseverything.com, get the picks from there, go up to the navigation bar, hit on gambling picks, or you can just type in winningcureseverything.com slash gambling picks, or if you're watching on YouTube, the link is down in the description, so go check that bad boy out. Uh, As always, follow on Twitter, follow us on Facebook, share the show out, subscribe on YouTube and uh, on the Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, whatever. Uh, We will see you guys again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.